Wow, third term na. And there's still nothing under third term. Hmm. I guess this will force me to make a video. Good day everyone, so this is Mr. Arias and as my pun suggested, we will discuss forces today. So forces are something that push or pull an object. It tries to cause motion to an object and thus it is also a form of vector quantity because direction here is very important. Now, forces are typically mass times acceleration, so that's F equals MA, which result to kilogram times meter per second squared as a unit. But you could also call this unit as newtons. So for today, we will discuss six types of forces that we will tackle as we go along the topic and module. And for this kind of thing, I thought it would be really interesting if we actually go around the house and get out of this bamboo wall that I have behind me and actually show you for myself the types of forces that you can find around your household. So with that, hard hat mode on and let's go. So the first type of force that we've already encountered before would be gravity. You've seen this in free fall, you've seen this in projectiles, and so on. And I'm sure that you are familiar with the representation of gravity as an apple, but one way that you encounter gravity every day would be, for example, when you go to a shower, which I hope you do when you're at home. And turn on the faucet, and there you go, you have gravity of the water flowing down. Now, force due to gravity is also known as weight. So that is why we have something like the weighing scale. Actually, contrary to popular belief, this doesn't measure mass directly. Instead, it gets the force due to gravity and then divides it by the gravitational constant of 9.8 meter per second squared at Earth. So that is why force due to gravity is equal to mass times your gravitational constant of 9.8 meter per second squared to get the actual force. Now you might be wondering, why is it that when I stand on this weighing scale, I don't go falling all the way to the center of the Earth? Well, when I have that downward force of weight pulling me all the way down, there's something counteracting it that goes directly opposite. And that something is called normal force. So normal force, by definition, means normal. Normal means perpendicular. So it's perpendicular to whatever surface I am standing on, and it goes counter to what gravity does, go down. So if gravity goes down, normal force goes up. By the way, normal force doesn't always mean perpendicular to the floor. It could also mean something like this when I'm pushing on a wall, okay? I'm applying a force going to the wall, but the wall is applying a force going back at me. So normal force could also be vertical. But it's not actually just only vertical or horizontal. If you have an inclined plane similar to my uh, book holder over here for my physics book, then the normal force is still normal to the surface, which means normal force goes in this direction, which is perpendicular to the slant of this inclined plane. But going back to this example of an inclined plane, let's uh, recline it a little bit more. Why is it that even if there's still an inclination to the inclined plane, then my book doesn't fall all the way down? As you can see, there's a gap between the holder and the book when I put it this way. Well, that is because there is another force acting on this, and that is your frictional force. Frictional force, by definition, acts against the direction of motion. Or impending motion, in cases such as the brakes of this car. The brakes of this car prevent it from going forward due to the force of gravity. Now, I'd just like to point out that there's another form of friction called fluid friction. This is a special type of friction that deals with fluid particles such as gas or liquid. So for example, this electric fan over here, if it simulates real wind, and if this is a real airplane, then you have the fluid friction of air resistance that counteracts the motion of the plane as it flies. Now, you might be exposed to this other type of force every morning whenever you have to open your curtains or your blinds in the house. So you'll have to pull on a certain rope to open it like that. So this is what you call tension force, and it's a force that is directed along the length of an object. So samples of it are, as I said, curtains. Or even when you decide to work out every morning for your morning exercise, 
this is tension force in the muscles. Now for this next force, I find myself having to put on my uh, hard hat again because we are going to do something a little bit more dangerous. And this type of force is called your electrical force. So obviously the most common example that you would find would be your circuit breaker, which definitely controls the circuits in your own house. But actually, there's another form of electric force that you might not even expect, and that is chemicals. So chemical bonds that you have are actually forms of electrical forces due to the attraction between molecules. So whenever you have chemicals at home, like when you're, for example, you are dishwashing and cleaning up some plates at home, this is electrical force in action as well through the chemical bonds. And finally, we have one more type of force, and that is your magnetic force. So this force is something that is displayed between two objects that have magnetic properties. So one of which, for example, would be your fridge. Because aside from the fact that it's a big hunk of metal, you can actually use this to attach magnets into to remind your mom of say, please buy me M&Ms when you go to the next grocery. But it's not just permanent magnets after all, because you also have induced magnets, such as one induced by electromagnetism. One example of which would be your electric fans, because these fans over here, they're powered by motors, okay? And these motors, when they spin, when electric current passes through the motor, this is what causes it to spin due to the presence of a magnetic field. So there you go. I hope you now know the six types of forces that we will be discussing this year. Gravity, normal force, friction, tension, electrical force, and your magnetic force. So what are we going to do now with these types of forces? We will now be able to interpret something called free body diagrams which will give us an indication of which directions the forces are actually going to. Once we've determined which directions each force will go into, we could then go into our calculations using Newton's law and the equilibrium equations which we will discuss later in this module. So thank you all for watching and always remember, may the force be with you. Bye guys!